The rule was to fly always in formations of two or four fighters. And the basic tactic, conceived by Lieutenant John Thatch, became known as the Thatch Weave. Relax. Relax. You're not in any trouble. Yet. What I mean is, there's not so much of a gamble in aerial combat as you seem to think. Now, I'm not going to give you a lecture because nobody can tell a fighter pilot how to meet all combat situations. But there are certain definite rules. I like to call these laws for air combat. We didn't make these laws. They made themselves in battle the hard way. And the enemy will be quick to enforce these laws. The penalty, well, it may mean more than the loss of a plane and pilot. I think it would be a good idea if I could show you exactly what happened one day in the Pacific. Take a look at this fighter section. These pilots know their business. The wingman flies step down, a comfortable distance away from his leader, so that he can cross on the back and forth when they make their turn, and so that he won't lose sight of his leader or get left behind on any sudden turn. The fighter section leader makes a sharp turn to get on the course, and the wingman stays right with him. The enemy is reported at 4,000 feet, so the section heads for the interception point, climbing to 6,500 feet for altitude advantage. The section leader wants the elements of surprise and position on his side, so he makes use of cloud cover and stays in the sun as he gets set for an overhead attack. He parallels the course of the scout, coming out from behind a cloud in proper position to begin his run. Just as the Jap comes into view, the leader rolls over and down on him. With his leader out of range, the wingman follows in. As the leader closes the range, he takes careful aim to hit the starboard engine and opens fire. He breaks away to the left. With beautiful timing, the wingman reaches firing range, opens fire, and breaks away to the right. Now the section has placed itself in position to bracket for a new attack. But no second attack is necessary. It's a quick kill. This section followed the rules, made no mistakes, took advantage of the sun and clouds, made an excellent choice of attack, didn't waste any time, and the enemy scout had no chance to spot the task force or radio a contact report. This one is a highly maneuverable carrier-based scout bomber. Fixed guns forward and a free gun aft. The Jap, who has visibility advantage in his favor, spots the fighter. Wasting no time at all, the snooper turns sharply and hightails it for the nearest cloud. The section leader makes an opposite course overhead approach to get the enemy before he can take cloud cover. As he goes into his dive, the Jap keeps a close watch on him. firing position, the Jap free gunner lets go with the burst. He's hit by the fighter, but he doesn't come apart. The leader continues on down in his dive and levels off to fly along the lower edge of the cloud bank. The wingman stays on top. If the fighters had radar, they could pour right into the cloud after their target. As it is, they know that if they can keep the Jap on a relatively straight course, they'll get him when he runs out of class. So the leader stays below and to the side of the cloud bank, while the wingman, on the same side, flies above and behind. As every smart fighter pilot knows, they must keep each other constantly in sight in order to box the Jap in from above and below. Because their lines of vision intersect at a point beyond the cloud, they'll spot the enemy if he should break cover on the far side. If the Jap had been lucky enough to duck into a big cloud, he could have circled and stayed there all day. Is within a couple of hundred feet of the surface. The fighters can't make overheads or high side runs on him because they won't have enough airspace to pull out. But the section is smart too. They bracket the jab for a flat side approach. The leader starts his run while the wingman stands by to go in from the opposite side. Just as the leader comes into firing position, the jab noses down and turns toward him sharply crossing him up on his lead. The leader has to break off to keep from hitting the water. 
And seeing this, the wingman swings smartly to the opposite side of the target, out of range of the gunner, and the Jap is still bracketed. The Jap saved himself on the first pass, but now the team is in better position than before because the Jap is too close to the water to pull the same trick again. The wingman makes a run to draw the fire of the free gunner, who doesn't know whether this is only a feint or the old one-two knockout punch. Timing his run to begin when the wingman is about halfway to the target, the leader starts a flat side approach. The Jap is on the spot. He can't repeat his nose down turn. He pulls up into a steep climb. But the fighter holds his lead, and that's the end of Shad number two. The first two sections did a swell job, but it won't mean a thing unless the third section comes through. The leader of this third section is Lieutenant Lug, and his wingman is Ensign Hazy. Looking for your wingman, Lieutenant? There he is out of position, lagging way behind, fat, dumb, and happy. Hazy has overshot in closing up and is flying in a kind of sandwich formation above his leader, so he doesn't see the turn. Come on, Hazy, get back into position. Beautiful formation. They fail to box him in from above and below, and he makes his getaway using the cloud as a smoke screen. Lug barrels in for another attack. Lug opens fire too soon and wastes ammunition. Hazy follows in too soon and... He's hit Lug's wing. That's a big help. Now that the boys have started to give a reasonable imitation of a fighter section that knows its business, the Jap realizes that they are getting smarter, and he eases down to 500 feet. Lug starts a flat side approach, and it looks like the Jap is finally in for plenty of trouble. Shut down. As far as Hazy is concerned, this thing has gone far enough. He sees red. He forgets everything except steaming in and getting that jet. He makes a steep high side on a target that's too close to the wall. The Jap promptly turns toward him, tricking Hazy into steepening his dive still more. It's a fatal error. He can't pull out. A sad report. The mission hasn't been accomplished. The section leader is helpless. His wingman has been lost. And all because of bad judgment, bad teamwork, and bad gunnery. One of these teams knew their business. The business of destroying are being destroyed. They follow rules that are as vital as flying sense. They utilized the elements of surprise, sun, and cloud cover. They sized up the enemy properly, chose the right approaches, and attacked smartly. The successful sections worked as teams, in lookout, in bracketing, in making feints. In fact, in all their strategies, they used the teamwork that it takes to blast these snoopers out of the sky. So don't be a lug, and don't you be a hazy. Keep these laws of combat. They'll make you top fighter pilots, but break them, and they'll break you. What's worse, they can break a lot of people along with you, because so much may depend on you and what you do in a tight spot. Gee, thanks, Commander. Thanks very much, sir. Shall we say, uh, good luck? No, sir, we'll make our own luck. Well. <laughs> <laughs>